Hi, in this video, I want to talk about probability word problems. Uh, this is an area where I see some students struggle a bit, um, partially because they're a little complicated and it's a lot of information to process and get organized, uh, and partially because people want to just dive in and start putting numbers together. They don't have a systematic way to attack the problem and move through it to get to a reliable answer. So I want to suggest here three steps to uh, use before you start calculating. I think this will give you a much higher chance of uh, succeeding and a systematic way to approach these situations. And I've got a few practice uh, problems for us to try this on as well. Okay, so to try to make this uh, concrete, here's an example of a word problem we might see. I like problems like this because it's closer to what you're going to see in real life, right? Nobody in real life gives you a set of equations and tells you to fill in the blank. They just dump some information at you and say, I've got a problem here. Can you help me solve this problem? And you have to try to organize the information into uh, mathematical terms and, and things like that. And that said, it's, it's still complicated. You've got pieces of information, you've got a bunch of words you have to turn into uh, equations. And so how do we go about doing? And what I would suggest not doing is try to say, oh, probability equals like 0.98 times 1% and just trying to put in numbers because you see them in the problem. You haven't actually figured out, like, what are you trying to compute the probability of? And why do those numbers you're putting together help you solve that problem? Instead of doing this, I suggest you go at it with um, a little more systematic approach. And so let me tell you about that. Here's what I'd suggest. When you see one of these word problems or, or you're out in the world and you get some information, first thing you want to do is think about what are the random events in this problem? What are the random variables in this problem? What is it that I'm actually trying to quantify or that has been quantified by me? for me in the problem state. Second, if you're given some information, if, if there's percents and probabilities in the problem statement, try to turn those statements into mathematical statements. If it says 95%, probability of what is 95%? Then see if you can write down the question as a mathematical statement. When there's a sentence that ends in a question mark, can you turn that into a statement with probability terms in it? Once you've written down what you know and you've written down a mathematical statement, then you can go about trying to solve the question. And I find oftentimes if you can get yourself through these three steps, you're going to be queued up to solve the question in a much more simple way because you're not thinking about solution strategies at the same time as you're trying to organize your information. You've gotten yourself organized first, and then you go to the solution strategies. So let's take a few pieces of this and try to um, pull it apart. So I'm going to think about just that third um, piece of it, first of all, writing down the question as a mathematical statement. So we get lots of... Uh, questions like the following in word problems. And so some things that I uh, um, think through, let me um, talk those through with you. And actually, I might suggest you could pause the video right now and take a try yourself at writing down answers for these. Then you can unpause and, and see how I would approach them. Okay, so when I'm walking through these statements, I'm looking for some kind of keywords, right? So we're, we're oftentimes going to see some question about what is the probability or what's the chance. Looking at this first one, I've got these kind of already written out with events in the problem statement, so we don't have to worry about that. We can just write down probabilities in terms of A and B. When I see an AND here, I'm looking for an intersection. In this case, I'm looking for something like a probability of A and B. That would be what I'm trying to solve for. In the second statement, if I see a, a phrase like if A happens, that's a conditioning type statement. So if we've conditioned on this, we, the problem statement has said, consider that A has happened. Don't worry about the, the likelihood of A happening. So we're not looking for the probability of A. We're saying A has happened. Conditional on that, what is the chance that B will happen? Right? So this is going to be some, we're going to write this one down as probability of B given A. Same thing in, in the third case. Uh, if, if we've got some sort of statement that says A has occurred, that's again a conditioning statement. And we're again looking for the probability of B. So this would again be a probability of B given. When we get to the fourth case, I've got a probability, or what's the chance? That's a probability question. I've got an A or B. So or refers to a union. So here I'm looking for probability of A or B, A union. So any outcome in A or an outcome B, event A or event B. And either one of those could satisfy this question. All right. Sometimes we'll just get a word given right in the sentence. So that's a conditioning type of case. So that's going to be a probability of A 
given B. Okay, for this last question, here the neither is an interesting word. So I'm, what I'm looking for is that neither one of these is going to happen. So A can't happen and B can't happen. This might be a case actually where it's drawing a Venn diagram could be helpful for us. And so if I've got event A and event B, I need the outcomes where neither one of those happens. So this hatched area is what I want. So anything in A or B means that one of them would happen, and I want neither of them to happen. So I could think about the event of A union B, that would be the area inside those two circles, and then I want the complement of that. Okay, so, so here's a case where we've kept the A and B parts pretty simple, but just trying to think about conditioning and intersections and unions. And how would those show up in words? All right. The other way we can sometimes see problems in mathematical probability is where we've got a question about a quantity. So here I'm going to, let's think about the random variable X as the quantity that we're interested in, the number of occurrences, let's say. And if we get words to questions like the following, we can think through how we might turn those into math statements. So again, you could pause the video for a second. And okay, so probability of two or more occurrences. So again, occurrences are X. So I'm thinking about the probability statement with X. So two or more, I'm going to say X is going to be greater than or equal to two. Second one, the probability of two occurrences. So here I've got a specific outcome of X having two occurrences. Sometimes we'll see a question, what's the probability of exactly two occurrences? That's the same thing, the exactly doesn't further specify anything. We could have a question that says at least two occurrences. So at least would be a, a greater than or equal to kind of condition. Could also say, what's the probability of at most two occurrences? That could be a less than or equal to condition. And then what's the probability that the number of occurrences will exceed two? That would be a strictly greater than. So having two occurrences wouldn't be consistent with that question. We want more than two occurrences. So that'd be a greater than. All right, so you can watch for these kind of exactly or more than or at least. Those will give you a sense of kind of what's the criterion you're looking for a random variable. Okay, so those were some kind of basic ones to warm us up with that third step. Um, now let's try to write questions as mathematical statements. We've got a little more information for here for a couple questions. And so what we want to do here is try to write a mathematical statement for the question. This is going to require us to, do, to also do step one from above where we have to specify some random events or some random variables in, in order to write a mathematical statement. So let's try this. Again, you can pause the video, try it yourself, and then see how I do. Okay, and I'll, I'll assume you can pause the video to read the question as well. I'll move along. So here we've got some information about Poisson process and, and the cost of work delays. In terms of writing down the question, we don't need to worry yet about Poisson process and things like that. What, as soon as I see what is the probability, I see it. Now I've got a question here. Total cost of delays, that looks like the outcome I'm interested in. And then I've got a term will exceed. And so I've got something about a criteria here and, and a number that I'm exceeding. So those are some different pieces that's going to put this together. I'm going to define random variable. So let's define C as the total cost of delays in one year. So here I'm following the highlight that part in red. So I'm getting a question about the total cost of delays in a one year project. That's pointing me towards the, the thing that I'm interested in with this question is this random variable C. And what the question is asking me now is what is the probability that C, this total cost of delays, will exceed $60,000. So exceed means greater than, and 60,000 is the threshold that I'm interested in. So here I've done step one of defining a random variable and step three of turning my question into a probability statement. I haven't yet sorted out what am I going to do with this like Poisson process and the rate of delays and all these things. Uh, that I'm just going to save for later. Right? All I'm trying to do right now is set up my um, basic part of the problem. Uh, if I can do this, then I should be in much better shape to actually put together the information from the rest of the problem statement. Okay, let's try the one at the bottom. So what's the probability that exactly 30 cars and five trucks arrive at the intersection in any given hour? So here I could potentially set up an event for 30 cars arrive. I'm going to use random variables. So we'll say C is the number of cars in one hour. And T 
is the number of trucks in one hour. So those look like the random variables that are relevant here. And now I've got a question of what is the probability? I've got kind of 30 and five for my criteria. And I have an and statement here, which is giving me a sense of intersection, right? So I need, what is the probability that the number of cars is equal to 30 and the number of trucks is equal to five? So that's what I'm trying to solve for here. Yep. And then I would need some more information from the problem statement about how often are trucks and cars arriving and so, so I could go evaluate these probabilities, but at least I've set up what it is that I'm trying to solve for. Okay, so now we can try to put this together in all three steps, looking back at that original problem I had up. And I just put the three steps up in the upper right hand corner so we can keep those in mind. All right, we need to define the random events, we need to write out the information that's given in the problem statement, and then third, we're going to write down the question we're trying to solve. So take a look at that. You can read it and pause to try this out yourself and then see how I do it. Okay, so for me, so we've got random events and what we're interested in is sometimes we can look at the question, we can look at the problem statement, but we're interested in kind of the weld being satisfactory and we're also interested in the weld failing the test. Right? And so we've got kind of information about satisfactory welds. We've got information about welds failing the test. So those would be the two events I would be utilizing here. So we've got, I'll call it S, is the event that the weld is satisfactory. And F is the event that the weld fails the test. So those are my events. Next, let's write down what am I given. And we could comb through the information. So the first bit of the first sentence here is just telling us a little bit about the setup. The bullet points are giving us some information here, right? So 98% of welds are satisfactory. I'm going to write that as a probability statement. So the probability that a weld is satisfactory is 0 0.98. And then 2% are unsatisfactory. So the fact that those add up to 100%, and then also from the words kind of satisfactory and unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory is just the complement of satisfactory. So I'm just going to write that as the complement of S. That probability is 0 0.02. Okay, and then 95% of unsatisfactory welds fail the test. So this is a prob statement about the probability of failing a test. Okay, so I've got a probability of failing, but of unsatisfactory welds, right? So this is a specific condition. I've, we're, we're given the, the condition that this is an unsatisfactory weld if it failed the test. So that's a conditional probability state. So I can say probability of failing, given that it was not satisfactory, is 0 0.95. And then the next uh, bullet point, I've got something similar. So we've got now of satisfactory welds. So my conditioning is on if it's a satisfactory weld. And again, what's the probability that it fails the test? So I've got a probability of failure given that the weld was satisfactory, and that's 0 0.01. Okay, so that's my information that I'm given. And then we get down to this final question here. What I noticed first is we've got a statement before we get to a question. We say we test a weld and it fails the test. So that's giving me some information about the space of outcomes that I'm looking at. I'm looking at only cases where the weld has failed the test. So that's a conditional probability. And then this question is, what's the probability that the weld is satisfactory conditional on? So we could write this, let's write it down here. Question, what is the probability that the weld is satisfactory given that it failed the test? So that's how I would write that question in terms of mathematical phrasing and using those events that I've defined in step one. Okay, so now I've got laid out really carefully, what are my events, what are the known probabilities, and what's the probability I'm trying to solve for? At this point, I can start putting this information together and trying to solve this question. That's a topic for a different video, but I'm all squared up that if I know about conditional probabilities and things, that this shouldn't be too difficult for me to move forward solving. Okay, let's wrap this video up. Uh, so to conclude, I've got this three-step process. I think it really sets you up for success in solving these word problems or solving more general problems where you're just given a bunch of verbal information and trying to do a calculation. 
use those three steps to find the random events, write down your information, and then write down your question as a mathematical statement. At that point, you can proceed to solve the question. And I think this approach is really helpful because it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's going to set you up to be organized with the information you have. When you're writing this down and trying to turn it into somebody else, whether you're in a class trying to document your solution for your instructor, or you're out in the real world trying to explain to somebody what you did, you've got nice documentation of how you went about solving the problem and what you're trying to solve. And then also importantly, that this process is going to make sure you're solving the correct question. If you just start plugging numbers into formulas, you, you may find that you've actually solved the question that's different than the question being asked of you because you didn't take the time to set everything up carefully here. And I think that's one of the real big benefits. It's just making sure you're actually solving the question that you've been asked. Okay, so I hope that's a helpful strategy for you, and I, I wish you luck with your probability problems.